and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, hello, hello. Happy um, Thursday. I almost said Wednesday, uh, but it is Thursday. Hi, Shem. Hi, Diane. We lost power, I'm sorry. Hi, Amy. Hey, Lisa. Hey, Terry. Hey, Stevie. I'm in California too. Um, you know, I've been kind of thinking about uh, Delwyn down in New Zealand because I think the that cyclone was pretty bad. Like people, whoa, I almost lost my thing. Um, people are out of power and stuff. Hi, Donna. Who are you? Like power for like in some of the rural areas for 10 more days. Like they've been out of power for a while. So I sent her a message in the guild, but I haven't heard back. So I'm hoping... Hoping all those New Zealanders are doing okay. I'm trying to think, who have I seen from New Zealand lately? I don't think I've seen any of you guys. I know it's like right now, I don't expect because it's really early in the morning. Hi PJ, how's it going? <clears throat> all right. Should we get into it? <laughs> um, all right, I'm sewing some pants that I basically use the Carolyn pajama bottom to draft a, uh, a pedal. Basically, I'm trying to think like, like I feel like I'm using this as a launching off point for a pattern, but really I didn't change it much. I just added the pedal hem and then I'm sewing the waistband slightly differently, but that's about it. Uh, so I made it a little wider. So yeah. Hi Mary. Hey Barbara. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I feel like this could go really fast. And I was already like, ooh, maybe, uh, maybe I need a backup plan, but we can get into it. So I'm going to be binding the pocket edge and I didn't trim the seam allowance off that. And I knew that yesterday, but we were just covering a lot of other things. So I'm gonna do that. And today I'll probably focus on, what do we wanna do? I think we could do the whole pants. I think we could do the whole pair of pants today. So we need to save something for Saturday, right? So maybe we could save the whole waistband assembly for Saturday, although it won't take me that long. I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we just see how it goes? Cause I usually make a really major mistake at the beginning of the sewing of the part one anyway. And that just costs us like 45 minutes anyway. So <laughs> that's how it always goes. I was recording a video yesterday and I, um, I always do that. Like I have everything set up, I prepare for days everything's dialed in, you know, like all of the scenes, like in my 
recording software, cameras, everything's dialed in. And then I start sewing and I make dumb mistakes, right? Um, and then one of the really big dumb mistakes, I, I got going, I was like, okay, finally we're past the dumb mistakes. I got to this one point and I had sewn the pockets on and then I went and ironed them. And when I came back, I selected a scene, a, a video scene that wasn't for what I was using. So it had all my live streaming stuff on it, like the little, um, well, I have to point this way, this little like um, viewer count thing was on there and my branding was on it and it shouldn't have been like that. And I was, and I left my mouse right here. My mouse is so ugly too, so I left it right here. So for the last half of that, that segment, I had all that in there. So I had to undo all the understitching. I had to unsew the pockets together because the pockets were sewn together as well. Then. And then I had to um, unstitch them tacked to the body of the garment. <laughs> I was like, dang it. <laughs> so, Spanish snaps today. They're so underwhelming though. I love how you're all like Spanish snaps and, and then like everybody's saying, or like a few of you have been saying that. We might do that. Let's just see how it goes, yeah. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the pockets, I guess. So usually what I would do, uh, cause we can pick whatever order we want, considering I'm not really using the Carolyn pajama pattern, is I'd probably do the pockets, the side seam, the hems, the end seam, and then the waist. The waist would be last. So that's how, that's the order I would pick. All right, so we're gonna trim off the seam allowance on this piece here because I'm gonna bind it. And we don't really need seam allowance if we're binding it. So uh, should we just do, should we do this on the rotary knife? Maybe we should do this on the rotary knife. It'll be a little more accurate. So let's do that. Okay, what do you guys think of this color? I bought this color for the ironing board cover. I didn't have enough of the other thing, unfortunately. And um, I get to, I can turn my camera to face the ironing board now just so I can see chat. Oops, I just whacked that camera. And see if my lighting is decent enough. Look at the stuttering though. What is that about? Hmm, I think this camera is on its way out. I think this camera is on its way out. Which would kind of be a bummer because I'm really tempted to get this new uh, live streaming camera, but it's a lot more. I need a, I need a ruler. <laughs> How are you all? Talk about dumb mistakes. I sewed my whole pair of upland pants together with top stitch thread. Didn't realize to the buttonhole. Oh, you know, uh, I mean, for what it's worth, Amy, I, to save time in live streams and things, um, I will sew mine jeans together in top stitch thread. I don't know if that makes you feel better. Yeah, but it won't work in the buttonhole for me either. Okay, so was this one with this? Hmm, I specifically cut my pockets to match the stitching. Okay, I'm just gonna trim off the seam allowance here. Like that. I think these go together. Let's check it out. If this was sewn like this. Yeah, I think that, see these lines go? Okay, that one's ready. That one goes to that. And then we just need this one last one. That's good, Amy, I'm glad, yeah. Uh, I Mainly because, I, I have to do that because the ten, my machine just doesn't really like top stitching thread. It'd be fine if it had been calibrated for that initially, but it hadn't been. And so um, it, it really just doesn't really like it very much. That camera seems super, right? See, that's the funny thing because um, 
I did a whole video recently and when I went to edit the ironing portions, I was like, what the heck? Why is this overexposed? I don't know why. So, oh man. Amber, two left fronts, oh. Yeah, exactly, Shim. I mean, that is one of my worries. So my next big purchase will be, and I don't need a new computer, this is my problem. Like when you want to add cameras, you have to get, you have to get more computer. <laughs> and um, you know if I do that, right? Like if I'm like, all right, let's upgrade. Cause I could, I could just upgrade. But that's what I worry about. I worry that it will be a, um, yeah, it'll turn into a $10,000 thing. I mean, and I don't, I'm not doing that. All right, so we're just gonna bind this and then we're gonna turn it. Oh, I didn't set up my machines for overlap. I knew I was forgetting something, okay. So this is my plan. I'm just gonna bind this little edge here so we have a hit of this, this uh, binding here. And then we can just overlock this together. Or maybe I could bind this too. That would be kind of a nice little homage to the jacket being bound. Okay, let's make sure that this is the right one though. There is this new streaming computer, not a uh, camera that looks really nice. And I thought, okay, if I get that, I would replace this one here over the machine, and then I'd put this one over there, so. Oh, really? Yeah, so I guess I should, I should think about thread more often. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> I really should. All right, so I'm just gonna, oh, we're gonna bind these together, actually. Let me pay attention here. I'm gonna put these. Well, it depends on how you look at this. Wrong sides or right sides together. In this case, it's gonna be wrong sides together. And we're just gonna bind this opening. Cause this this is a, a pocket that doesn't have a facing. You're using the outer fabric for the um, pocket. I'm gonna lessen the pressure of my presser foot and I'm gonna change my stitch length a tiny bit. That's better. And then we're gonna turn this to the right side. Ooh, this bind's gonna be kind of thin for the thickness of this. I never grade seams, but I just, I just might. I don't have much to grade though, you know? Let's see if I can just kind of give it a little haircut like this. We'll just do it at an angle and trim down this bulk. See if that helps. Let's see if that helps. I could probably iron it. Maybe that's what I'll do. This is pretty narrow. Yeah, I'll iron it and then I'll, we'll bind it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I used to uh, we I used to pay a little attention to a thread when I had chicken boots, and that was ba mainly because some threads will create a lot of like fuzz, and f and the fuzz accumulates like right here at the top of the needle. That's where I would see it, and um, that was kind of a problem. You know, it would be a problem on our binding machine in particular. Hi, Julie. How's it going? Maybe I'll do a slightly smaller seam allowance with the binding. That's what I'm gonna pull the binding over. I'm gonna do like an eighth inch seam allowance on the binding. <laughs> this knit fabric is so funny. Like it's, you know, it's quilted. It's like three layers. And so, uh, you know, it's cut, it's cut pretty good, but <laughs> I can tell it's a little wiggly. All right, let's go iron these. Let's see, let me bright, turn down the brightness. I was a little concerned about this darkness, so this dark fabric. We'll try that for now. Okay. Oh, 
whack. There we go. Maybe because it's zoomed in, is that why it looks so stuttery? It looks really stuttery to me. I think I can get this to fit better if I iron it a little bit. I didn't trim this one down, right? It was the other one? Oh no, maybe it was this one. I never pre-iron my binding. I think that's all I'm gonna do. Maybe I'm not gonna do too much. But I will iron this one too. My nice hot iron. Is this the one I trimmed? I don't think so. I find myself switching thread weights. Like I was sewing something that was like a canvas and I just used my regular cones of thread I have, which are kind of heavy. Uh, and then for the lining that I was using, which was like a, um, was, was Bimberg rayon. I switched, cause I was using a serger and I was finishing the edges and I switched to a regular serger thread, like the Mettler stuff. Cause it's, it's finer. It's like a, it's a Tex 27. Oh, this is way better. Okay. I don't really care about hitting on top of the binding on the other side since it's a pocket opening. It really will never be seen. Oh, I have plenty of space now. This is the one I use a narrower seam allowance for the binding. That was the way to go. Don't get stretched out, please. I'm not, I'm not being very good about that. Yeah, this one's a little tighter, a little tighter. I'll use my binding attachment to make the draw cord and I don't think I can do it on the edge of the knit, right? We are, I tried that last time and it just wasn't too happy with it. Oh, 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 Terry. Hey, Michelle. Terry, 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 Terry. Do you have the invisible zipper foot? I feel like you do, because I feel like you've said, Sarah, you need to get an invisible zipper foot. I tried that thing yesterday and I just want to sew invisible zippers for the rest of my life now. <laughs> I want to be a spokesperson for invisible zipper feet. I want to quit my career and only sell invisible zipper feet. That's how I feel about these things. I should, uh, I should sacrifice one of my zippers and show you guys because I feel like when you see this video, people are going to buy an industrial machine just to have this invisible zipper foot. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, the Mettler, I, I think it's fine. I, I only have it because it's all I, that they carried where I used to live. All right, so we're gonna line this up. And so my plan is to overlock these pants. But I could do a little binding on the inside if I have enough. Why isn't this one lining up like it was supposed to now? Remember, I was pretty, pretty careful. You know, I was just saying. I'm gonna um, stitch it down up here. To lift my presser foot a lot because of the thickness. Yeah, Donna, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I, I to be truly, truly transparent, you guys. I my my chair is stuck in a divot. Um, I have bought that little invisible zipper foot kit for the home machine before, and I just couldn't get it to work. Um, but this one, you know, it has these, you know, like the, the, the coil goes into that, right? And it just stitches in the, the 
perfect. Yeah, it makes it so simple. I'm such a purist sometimes and it gets in the way of me, you know? <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna run out of binding if I do this, but it'll look nice. <laughs> so I'm doing it. I can, I can cut more, you know, I can cut more. Um, we want this to show, yeah, on, we want it to show on the other side nicer. So we'll do it from this side to the other side. And I'll do, this has like a 5 8 inch seam, but that's okay. I don't mind my pocket getting longer. I'm going to do that, that uh, quarter inch, whoa, wait, slow down there, buddy. Do a quarter inch seam, but I'm going to do an eighth inch for the binding. And I'm going to cut it down here wrap it around like that. And then now we're going to trim this down. Like that. Yeah, I guess I just didn't have a whole lot of faith in how it was actually going to be. Like zipper or feet aren't always the answer, you know? In this case, it's the answer. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. This is a case where the foot is actually doing so much of the work. And, and you know, I know that um, home machines, they enjoy the benefits of so many different kinds of feet that do a lot of the work, right? And the industrial doesn't really have that very often unless you get a foot that's installed, you know, semi-permanently or you just have a machine that does it. Like they just don't really make it so that you can use your, your uh, straight stitch for lots of different things. Um, that looks nice. So yeah, anyway. Okay. So let's attach this at the side here. I'm trying to kind of shrink this up a little bit to get just so that the lines match a little better. Stitch this down. All right. And there's one pocket. That looks really cute. Yeah, I do too, Julia. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Let's do this, finish this side. So the side we already have our pocket and now we just need to do the bottom. Not doing that fly. Let's get that to line up there. This one's a, a little more stretched out. I kind of knew that was happening, but I was just being a little bit cavalier. Oh, there's a little run in my, or there's a little fabric flaw. Bummer. How come I didn't notice that before? I may have to secure that. It just looks like a little thread hiccup. Maybe that's where it ran out and they changed. Let's stitch this down. And then, is that just off a little bit? Kinda. Or can I pull it up like that? Do I want to do that? It's kind of off. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I just made it worse. Let's see if I do that what happens to the other side. Yeah, it actually pushes the teeth out of the way and puts the needle right behind it. Oh yeah, I found that it's still so totally fine, Diane. It's a little slick for certain things. Yeah, exactly, it's a pleasure. It makes it a pleasure. Okay, that's okay. Nothing funny happening there when I lined it all up, except the lines aren't matching and that's on me. And I'm going to count on, <laughs> which is a lot to say, but I'm going to count on 
this shrinking up a little bit to correct that in the laundry. Kind of a lot to ask of it, but you know. All right, we're going from that side to the other side, right? And we're gonna offset the binding. How come this time I'm going from the side seam to the end? And I did that on the other one too. Oh, okay, I was gonna say that would mean I'm on the wrong side and that is it. I didn't think I was on the wrong side. Oh, he is amazing. Um, you know, he uh, is the, I think I was telling you about him, Terry. You know what, actually, Terry, I think I was gonna send you a message about him and I wrote it all and then I deleted it because I just thought, what if she's just not into it and she wants she wants to feel polite and say something and I didn't want to put that burden on you, but um, he got this like year long thing in the UK, that's where he's at right now, where he's um, learning to do some a perfect, a particular style of tailoring. And he was also, so his Instagram is really fun. He's a really nice guy and his name's Dwayne. Um, and he was also just interviewed on So Organized Style, which is the, the like podcast that kind of does a lot of So Over 50 folks. I highly recommend it, you know. Maybe I recommended him to Shim. Maybe that's it. Yeah, his whole trip seems just amazing. <laughs> okay, Terry, yeah. I just didn't want you to be like, yeah, that's not my cup of tea, you know? <laughs> or that person isn't my cup of tea, you know? Like, I, I, don't, I don't take any of that, like, personally either. You just never know what will resonate with yourself, you know? Like, that's how I feel like I'm open to anything. Sometimes I want to like something and I just don't. And that, it's kind of a bummer, you know? Like a podcast. I'm like, I really want to like this podcast, but I just can't get into it. And time is valuable. I think like that whole thing of, um, oh, you have to finish every book you start. I, I gave that up a long time ago. I used to be such a huge reader of physical books. And I am more likely to finish an audio book I don't like than a, than a, a hard book. A physical copy, but even audiobooks, I'm like, nope. I have given this 10 chapters. <laughs> and Or sometimes it'll take my sister going, no, 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 you got to get to this point. And then she'll give me kind of not a spoiler, but kind of some clue into the world building. And then she's like, this is, and then and she's right. Usually my sister's very good at knowing what I'll probably like. All right, pockets are done. So organized style, S-E-W, so organized style. Um, I can pull them up. Yeah, if anyone's into menswear sewing um, or tailoring, this, this guy is really having a good time with learning he and he started a youtube channel last year as well yeah so it's pretty cool and mainly menswear and mainly is spelt like the you, the state main hi walter <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Walter. It can be background noise. Yeah, and then it's just like, okay, <laughs> how much of this person want, do I even want to let seep in, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, sure, yeah. He's he's cool. I've, I've been interviewed by Maria. She's very, very nice. Um, yeah, she's very nice. I don't know what else to say. Hi, Fiona. <laughs> I just mailed your uh, labels today. You will be thrilled to know they co it cost me $1.85. So 
Not bad at all. Fiona sent me a self-addressed stamped, oh, she sent me a, a, an envelope to send her her journeyist label um, and a five, like an American $5 bill. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> so that worked out. All right, so we have our pants front. There, see that gaping? Look at that. Now, I am have heavily hoping that this is going to shrink up a little bit just because I know this fabric is pretty open weave. If I was a little worried and I didn't think that that was going to happen, um, I would probably take it off and re-sew it and I would stretch the binding as I attached it, which is what I should have been doing. And I usually do when I put binding on, depending on where it's going, I, I kind of tug the binding as I'm sewing and then um, turn, turn it and sew it. Um, the other added you know, quotient here is that this is knit, so you know, it has that stretch anyway. The other thing you could do is put a little piece of something woven, like a little piece of selvage fabric in there. You could stabilize it um, or the clear elastic, but those would add to the bulk of that seam allowance, and I did, obviously didn't have much room in there, so. Cornelius squiring. Oh, uh, squiring. Isn't it Cornelius squiring? Um, isn't he, is he Pinsent tailoring, Jan? Yeah, Cornelius is awesome. Do I have him confused with Pinsent tailoring? Tailoring? He does a, a historical. Pinsent does, um, historical stuff. Eye candy for men's historical clothing and sewing, for sure. All right, uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna thread my serger. Sorry. No, it's not him, okay, okay. I could easily get him confused. All right, so I have a new setup over here. Oh, nice. I'm so glad. <laughs> All right. I have this lightweight thread. We need some more thread. Hi, Marlies. How's it going? Oh, wow, he must be busy then, Walter. Do you, you guys see this? Look at that. So many of my cones are like this. Isn't that weird? No, I don't know why. Like, I, I understand, like, the plastic is going to get old. These are not old cones. That's the funny thing. These are actually cones I've bought. Yeah. Wait, these are newer cones, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I don't stack them or anything, so it's literally like imploding on itself, like I, the plastic. I don't even know why it would do this. I've never stacked my, stored my cones. So, and even if I did, you know, the stacking would be like wouldn't even touch that. Isn't that weird? Sorry, this is why I do this off camera. I'm gonna um, switch my camera over here too. So, Look away if you don't want to get nauseous. But look at that camera angle. I don't know. I mean, the way that we used to order those, um, with navy blue, we probably did do a small run, but like when we would get cream, 
we would have to buy a case. We would buy a case of them. No, I take that back. I, I, it's the opposite of what I'm thinking because when we bought a color, we usually had to make a minimum. That was the worst. Thread is the absolute worst thing to buy wholesale. I know that probably doesn't seem true, but it is. <laughs> um, let me see, how does this look? This, looks, this doesn't look too bad. Because you don't get it whole, at a wholesale price. It's, it's actually the exact same price as buying at retail, so then you're kind of like, well, why buy it wholesale? Um, and if you want to match a color, you have to buy, it was something like 24 spools. <laughs> 24 spools, 24 cones of thread. <laughs> so uh, we uh, never got dyed to match thread. It's like the one thing I never made the minimum on because we only ever needed, I think 10, 10 or 10 spools, 10, yeah, t cone, not spools, cones. Oh my gosh. This one does have the needle threader but um, it's kind of finicky. We can try it out. Let's try it out. Let's, let's uh, preview the needle threader. Okay, this needs to be right there, and it is. All right. And then we go like this, and then we put, this is kind of in the way, I can tell. We put this here, and nothing happened. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, let's do a little test sew. Okay. So I'm real. I'm getting really good at. Um, Okay, let's play around with the serger for a minute. I can't see chat though. Yeah, gremlins are chewing. The, the dropping in transit, you know, it's honestly kind of a, that's a very probable thing, you know? Like, I kind of think like that's the most likely thing in some ways, but the thing is these are not the only cones that are like that. Mary, I love watching people play video games. <laughs> meeting in, wait, where are we meeting in Ireland? I missed this. Oh, is his school in Ireland? Yeah, you should check, check out what Dwayne's up to, Shim. It's pretty cool. I, I know you can't probably take a year off, but. <laughs> um, so I've been really getting good at my uh, ending and starting. So let me show you what I mean. So we want to sew this seam right here, right? And um, can you see okay? We want to sew this seam, this seam right here, right? And so I want to sew it like this. I want to go down this way. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go on. We're going to zoom in and we're going to pull this, this like this. Oh, but we need, I, I need to figure out how to disable my light bulb. That's what I've decided. <laughs> you learn tailoring in Ireland. You guys, there's so much to do in Ireland. You don't have to just wait for a tailoring school. <laughs> right, Anna? Exactly. I mean, me both. I was literally just watching a Fortnite stream before I started. <laughs> okay, um, let me get this off my stream. Okay, so I got down to the end, and so what, you can't really see it, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the end. My needles are going to be, go off the end, but then they're going to, I'm going to take them up, all right? And I'm going to lift my presser foot up, so the needles are up, presser foot's up, and now I'm going to take this and flip it over, right? I'm going to show you two things that I've been working on. Okay, now I'm going to just put this edge right up to where the needles were. 
I'm going to start sewing again. I'm not going to let the blade touch these stitches. I am going to let it cut this tail off. So now we're going to keep sewing. And so then I have, look at that, this nice little finished edge, right? My thread is very heavy, so it's very, very heavy on there. And right, let me show you the other little thing I've been doing. So I had to pre-overlock all of my pattern pieces. And so I wanted to just do the whole perimeter, right? So this is the other thing I've been doing is I go off the edge again. I let the needles go off one stitch. I raise them up. And now I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees. And then it always looks a little crumpled in there, but it ends up being okay. And then I now keep sewing and if you have to trim off, you can trim off or whatever. And so now if I want to end like I started this one here, we'll do the same thing. We're going to go off the end. I raise my needles up. I got really good at just like sewing up to that point. So here's that corner. So look at that. I can do better too. And now I'm going to flip this over and sew back on itself. I'm not going to let my blade touch this. I would drop the blade, but honestly, it, it's, uh, it, I don't really need to. So like this, sew a little bit, and then I'm going to go right off the edge. I pull it so I can go 90 degrees off. And now I don't feel so bad about just clipping these threads like this. And I just pull them a little bit to tighten them up. But look at that, that edge there. It's pretty nice. Anyway, that's what I've been practicing. How about you? <laughs> All right, let's do the side seams. Oh, where are you going in Ireland, Jan? I loved Ireland. <laughs> Here's your beast boat. You would probably have a couple for him, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna put my uh, side seams together here because, let me check here at the bottom. So we're doing this petal hem. Let's switch to the, um, oh, I can't really. Wait. If I want to do something over here, I'm looking too far away for the camera. Here we go. It's a little dark right now. All right, so we have this petal hem. See how we have this curve right here? It's so dark, sorry. And then we have this little wing right here. So the side seam is unaffected, so we're going to sew this whole side seam together, which is going to include the pocket and the back here. Under the serger, the lighting will be a little better. Maybe I should brighten it up a little bit. But you can kind of see because of the light. This is what I hate right here. I want something to prevent this kind of thing flipping into my surging. So my fingers don't have to be right there. Like that, see that? That's annoying for me. It's annoying for anybody, I think. Jeez, I can't even like stop it from doing that. It's cut, it's actually cut, and then it flips up. Okay, now we're past that thickness. All right, I'm gonna check out my stripes here and try and match them best I can. I wasn't paying attention to that just now. And then uh, let's look at some of these other stripes here. Let's brighten it up a little bit. I'm getting used to a new setup, so I'm sorry but it's gonna make it all better eventually. Well, that, let, let's do that. Oh my gosh, why wouldn't do that sooner? 
I'm going to just put a few clips at some of these quilt lines. Don't even need that knee notch because uh, I'm more focused on matching stripes. Is there a train in Ireland? I don't even know. We rented a car and drove. It was an adventure. <laughs> Just don't rent a stick. <laughs> unless you're left-handed, I guess. <laughs> You've always wanted to stick on the left. <laughs> Is this loud? It seems louder over here. You know what? I wonder if I should put this on my wool mat. That's kind of an idea. Hmm. I like that idea. It might help on the noise and vibration. Okay. We have one side seam. Now we're going to do the other. Oh, nice. It would take a lot to get used to, Shim, yeah. All right, I just have my little label here I didn't want to forget. So I'm just gonna pin it up here at the top so I don't forget. Just bent the heck out of that pin there. They don't make pins the way they used to, I tell you. All right, so now we gotta deal with this whole thickness thing again. Um, I'm gonna try and, look at that. It's not, it's not matching the side seam though. See, I'm matching my, I matched my stripes on my front, but not going to match up here. Let's see here. Can I get it to start matching by about here without torquing it? Let's see. Oh, nice, Mary. I got mine from Scotland. It's one of my only fabrics I haven't used. My mom lost hers in the fire, and so I've thought about like using mine to make something, you know? But I don't know what. It's only one meter. Like throw pillows, you know? <laughs> I don't know. I need one more pin, but we're just going to take this clip right here. All right. So there must be a little thing like what I want to invent is like a little thing that sits like I want the foot to sit like this and go across the where the knife goes so that nothing can go into it. And I feel like there's something like this exists. Cause I started kind of seeing someone talk about something like that somewhere and they were talking, the, the whole thread is about something else. Like it was casually mentioned and I was like, oh, this actually exists, you know? The fact that my stripes, stri stripes or stitching lines sort of matches a miracle considering the fabric, the fabric quantity that I had.
Oh, wow. Oh, you're going to use your clan tartan for that contest, Mary? Ooh. I can't wait to see that. Things are vibrating off the table. All right, here we get to my thickness stuff here. Okay. So if I can keep it in a continuous line, I can hold on to it. But I shouldn't have to do that. See that? Makes me a little nervous. My foot's not on the pedal, just so you guys know. I particularly got this machine because it was good with thicknesses. And it does sew through thicknesses really nice but it spits the fabric. So it's a little higher up here. This is not good. <laughs> Look at that. Boy. <laughs> um, all right, we're gonna find the hem and move this camera over. This is why I want another computer. So I can add a camera over there. I gotta unzoom this. So I wouldn't have to go back and forth like this. You know what I mean, jelly beans? Hi, Kira, how's it going? All right. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Oh yeah, Jan, I think I saw that, the Kenmore. That's pretty cool. All right, let's check out this uh, side seam. Ugh, it doesn't match that great. It does down here. But look at that. Matching happens a little sooner. Hmm. Let's see how they compare to one another. Oh, darn, Kira. The Kenmore used to be the one that I used to give Julie, or uh, Julie, um, Jan. I used to buy those for like 25 bucks at a, a um, garage sale. They were in like avocado green and that weird taupe color. Okay, I do feel like that's sticking up above both of them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just trim it to, to um, blend in there. Taking some liberties. This knit, you know, there's gonna have some adventures with it. I have a feeling these pants will be a little big too. Yeah, like how could we text and drive if we were, you know, using a manual? <laughs> Just teasing. All right. We're going to bind this. I wish I, I'm going to move the binding attachment. I'm going to use that for draw cord. All right, we're going to bind this little petal hem edge here, right? So here's how this is gonna work. So 
This right here is the back of the pant. So this is the front of the pant. You see that? And we're going to bind this whole edge here. And then we're going to fold this under up to here, right here. And there will be binding on top. And then we'll see how this, this little whoop de do right here. So that's our plan. And um, this one we want, was this notch the one where it ends? It is, right? Because that's the notch, okay. Right? <laughs> needle plate, what oh, about the needle plate? Oh, that I hung on to, I like the seam allowance, the marginal. Yeah, oh, that is kind of nice on both sides. Yeah, I have one of those. One of the many I've gone through. here. The pattern's on the other side of the room right now. So let's just check it out. Pretty sure that the notch, oh those notches go like that. Okay. So we're going to go like up to here. Right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, okay, good. All right, so let's put the binding on here. This time I will stretch it a little bit so my hem doesn't get flared. And then see, there's one of my notches. I was talking to you guys about this. Like you would never put a notch like that in a production pattern, you know? So we're gonna mark it with a pin that was, ugh. I'm just gonna mark my notches with the pin. I should have done this before I started sewing. It's pushing it out of the, the um, presser foot. This is uh, the back, okay. Pressing the seam allowance towards the back. Going to smooth out this transition here. Oh, man. Yeah, those Kenmores just were such great machines. It's so cool you found one of those. I think I'll trim this a little bit more. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Do I do I iron this or not? See how this flares out? Do you see that? Look at how the knit acts, the quilted knit. See how these little, it's like little cups. Once it's sewn down, you know, compressing it, it makes it flare out a little bit. See them all? Hey, 
Hey, I have a, a question for you guys. Um, I am going to apply to make videos for someone. Um, they they invite all anybody to do it, right? Um, and my 500 plus videos on my website are apparently not enough. <laughs> So I've delayed applying because I'm just like, okay, I, I really want to. I just needed to get some things done and I've been working on my setup and I really want it to be smooth running and, uh, and like optimized for that so that it's actually not harder to take on jobs like that, right? Okay, here's my question. They're like, okay, you can, you can, they want me to film the video and they want it to be not with my branding, which is understandable. Um, that's fine. The video can be one minute long. Like they're just like, we don't really care. We just want to know what are you going to submit? Like what is the flavor of a video visually that you're going to send to us, right? But of course I'm trying, oh, I needed that pin. Um, I'm trying not to overthink it because if they're, if they're true, like being, you know, um, truthful about like it does the, it's not really the content that matters, then it's really just how visually it looks. But I'm just like, okay, but the, the, you know, all the videos on my channel aren't enough to convey that kind of aesthetic. I feel like content matters a little bit. So here's my question. Um, I need to put together a video to apply for this video position. It's not a job, it's just like, maybe they would hire me to do video. I want it to be under eight. I want it to be like eight minutes long. I feel, I feel like that's the amount of effort I should put into this. Eight minutes is still like a four hour long commitment minimum for me because I have to, it's probably more than that. It's probably like a day, it's almost a day thing because I have to put together whatever the content is, film it, which that's not, you know, the filming will take not much time. Then I have to edit it, right, and submit it. And then I have to upload it and render it and all that stuff, right? What do you guys think I should do? What would, so this is what I was thinking. Should I do something like, and this person, they are a online retailer and so they sell everything sewing related. It's not clear what kinds of videos I would get hired for. I can do whatever I want, but I have a feeling the content would rely, would lean toward not like a sew through of a pattern. So it would be more like tips and tricks or um, fabric choices and things like that. So what do you guys think would be a good content thing? Kind of neutral, but applies to everybody. <laughs> Please help me answer this. I could probably knock this out today if I just had an idea. My, my current idea is one of the latest how-to videos I uploaded because when I did that, I was thinking, oh, I should do this for this application. So the, the one I did was the difference between a French seam and a flat felt seam and how to do both. You know, that's, that's pertinent knowledge to a lot of people and, and, um, and it's kind of shows you what the difference is, where you'd see each one, and then how to do it. Do you guys think that that's, is that invisible? Yeah, but I feel like I doubt their crowd is an industrial sewing machine crowd and there I am using this like magical foot, <laughs> you know? So I don't know. My favorite notions and tools. Okay, I like that, that's interesting because they do sell notions and tools and maybe I could do a quick scan on their site of what they have so I don't use something they don't have, or maybe I should so that they start carrying it. Like the, um, I heard that the um, Hera marker became like a whole thread on the Cashmeret Club um, site <laughs> after the Brad, the, uh, the um, Mercot video, <laughs> which I loved. I was like, that's awesome. I love that thing. Getting fabric on green. Oh. Yeah, and that's a good one. That is kind of a good one. It wouldn't really like showcase my machine setup very well, you know? 
But you're right, maybe I wouldn't be doing machine, machine videos. I just checked what the back was and then I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I thought about binding, grading between sizes. Yeah, yeah, zipper install, okay. I could do a fly zipper thing. And here's the deal. I was thinking if I did something that um, I haven't done on my channel, I would just uh, use it for both. Cause I can brand it both ways. You know what I mean? I could use it for the application of their thing and then um, make it for my own channel too. Use the video. It's not like it's exclusive content if I'm applying for a job or a, you know, a freelance position in my opinion. <laughs> Tech, a technique one. I like that idea because of that too. And I think that one of my strong suits is explaining something I feel like the grain line thing though is a really good one because I just want everyone to know that and and that really made a big impression on a, a lot of you when I did that in the guild. I know Kira, but apparently the I, I, I almost have 600 videos on my channel I think right now. A poll on the, I could do a poll. Or they want them to put in a pool of others to pick from. <laughs> right here, I know. Um, I don't know. Like, I was, I'm very, like, concise but thorough when I apply for, like, fill things out. And so I answered each question and I put, like, oh, here's a link to an example. And then, then they were like, this is great. We love this. We, now, now you need to make a video to apply. I was like, huh? <laughs> uh, I just sent you nine links to videos of completely different things. Like, okay, if you want this kind of thing, this is me doing this. If you want this kind of thing, this is where I did that. And here's two examples. Like I was really, um, I spent a lot of time on the email. <laughs> I spent as much time on the email as I'm gonna spend on recording this video for them, <laughs> you know? Okay, so I still like hearing your I think that they are, they probably are getting lots of uh, applications for it. I don't know. I'm on their newsletter list, but I don't know if they've put videos in there. It's probably on their website. Yeah, let's see how many hoops. Yeah, that's true, Anna. Well, I could maybe bring it to my pattern table overhead setup. I don't think my pattern table setup is, it's not my idea of optimal. I know it's probably not bad, but. Hmm. I also don't want it to be too advanced because I, I think the video that I want on my channel soon is how to flat fell an armhole. Because I don't have, really have a whole lot of flat felling videos on my channel. And I know that that might mean there's not a whole lot out there in the world to pick from. I just want to round out my content offering too. So, um, but I feel like that's a little bit more in the niche sewing, <laughs> you know? I guess maybe then that would be a good opportunity to be like, this is the difference between these two things and why you would use one and why you wouldn't use one. Okay, that's what I had left. We're doing good, we're doing good. <laughs> hmm, I don't know how I would do that. Okay. Well, thanks you guys, I appreciate it. I knew you guys would have some really good ideas. Okay, so now I'm at this inseam point and I'm trying to remember when I did this before. 
can't I just go, I just go all the way down, right? And then we're gonna come around and we're gonna top stitch it. That's what I figured out, right? Did I pin, no, I did not pin my notches. <sighs> but at least I have them on this side, so we'll um, use these. I was, I was uh, being very self-centered <laughs> and asking for my own gains for help from you guys, sorry. <laughs> Common problems once you account for tort, yeah. I really like this idea, Anna, don't get me wrong. I feel like I'd have to do a lot of work to make something that was very clear and concise. You're always looking for good beginner videos. Yeah, give me an idea for a good beginner video. I love that. A standalone flat felled arm. arm. <clears throat> A standalone flat felled arm or seam, do you mean seam? Um, I do have a flat felled video like on how to do it. I just don't have it. I wanna do it for like a armhole. Okay, where's those pins? Right here. Like Anna, I think that's such a good idea that I should explore that anyway and maybe even include it in one of the guild SBSs or, or a guild content thing. Cause I think that that would be, like I try and reserve the content for you guys, um, for the guild people, the stuff that's like really, really like good. I try and reserve that for you first. You would share that video everywhere. All right, okay, let's let's talk about it a little bit more. So you're thinking, because I want to know, oh, pattern terminology. That's actually um, the SBS for, it's not May. It's, it's, it's soon after that. I think it's May, somewhere in May, June. I'm not sure. Um, oh, Walter. <laughs> I didn't, hi, Leah, how's it going? Um, I fell asleep to the shirt is what I saw. Oh, okay, okay. Have a pattern, but now what? That's why I haven't been able to get started and so many patterns. Oh, okay. Did you come to the cutting confidence zoom? That's exactly what that was focused on was um, taking away all of those worries and things. All right, so we're talking about fabric torque, right? And so let's say we're talking about wovens. Wovens aren't gonna really torque knits are going to torque. But the, the, the fabric isn't on grain when you cut it, I guess, I mean, if you're doing a twill, it would torque. Yeah, that's, that's Anna's idea too. I'm gonna think about this. You know, I don't think I got the notch that was over here though. So let me see. Is this all I need? I just need this to go here. Oh, because this one has the notch still right there. All right. <laughs> Walter. <laughs> that is like a band uh, thing to sew in my shop. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I did make that hedgehog toy. <laughs> exactly, thank you, Terry. My moderators are here to defend me. <laughs> All right, so what I, like when I did the sleeve the other day, um, one of the things I was like, okay, if I overlock down on this edge and go all the way down and at least finish this with a surge, right? Um, is that leaving the seam in a position where I can pull this over like this and top stitch it down. And it, and it does, it's obviously not gonna be ideal in some cases. I wish I had a notch over here though of where this ended. Is it this? Is it that? And then this goes to, I only have one notch right here. There's two notches here. So what I'm thinking is that this one goes to here. 
and this one goes to here. All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. So I bound a little too far. Is that what we're thinking? I'm getting the pattern out. <sighs> Let me see what you guys said. Why are my things not lining up when you fold over a waistband or tooth? Oh, oh yeah. Like long, straight pieces. How to lay out the pattern in green, how to transfer markings and notions. Yeah, 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 that's actually good. I like that. I like this. Okay. Green line is so important. Where did I put the patterns? Oh, here we go. I already put them away. And I kind of knew yesterday that if I put the pattern away, I would need it. Sorry, my microphone is moving around. That's true, Shim. That's an interesting point. <laughs> Hand sewing, teddy bears. Is this the, both of them? No, just this one and, okay. Let's go over to the ironing board. When I know um, we have like plenty of time to sew something, I really get, I just get chatty. And I really don't think anyone's gonna watch the stream for a tutorial on how to do this since I drafted it. <laughs> so let's just take our time with it. Here's our petal hem. This is the front. We have those two like that. Okay, so we really did just have one notch over here. And that does go like this. Hmm. I don't really like how I did the join here. And I think it's because of that seam allowance. That's what it is. It's the seam allowance. Okay, we're good. We're good. That's what I'm not thinking about is the gigantic seam allowance. The five eighths. Yeah, there you go, Julie. <laughs> Be bespoke teddy bear clothing. Collar and collar stain in the French seam inseam pockets. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering, Jan. Like the, the category, what was interesting was that they really wanted us, like the people that they sent this call out to for video, video makers, um, they wanted us to pick a category. And I was like, I don't care what I do. Just give me what you need. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't want to come up with ideas that I don't get. That's a different kind of thing. I shouldn't have to come up with an idea. Like I'm already doing that full time <laughs> for me. <laughs> So, oh, the t you have to trace the pa patterns. Oh, okay. We talked about tracing, pa favorite tracing papers in the cutting confidence thing. Yeah, right, Terry, I know. It's a lot of seam allowance. And I just was thinking that um, when it's folded here, right, when that 5 8 inch is taken up, so if this is supposed to go here, I know that I filled in a tiny little bit right here, you know? Yeah, exactly. I have 500 things. I'm like, mm, I'm already coming up with ideas. I'm already trying to captivate. 
<laughs> this is it, this is why. Because this 5 8, so if we put this ruler here at 5 8 and we come straight down this line, that's right there, that's where this seam is hitting over here, right? And then you have this folding over. That's what's going on here. Okay. I don't know if I really am helping myself. Oh, did someone have a question? Wait, our RT blade. I did not see an RT blade. Thank you for saying that, Walter. Where is their question? Oh, brand new to sewing. What is fabric torque? I'm so sorry I missed your question. I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> um, fabric torque, let me just show you on the leg of this pair of pants right here. So if you ever decide, or maybe you have sewn jeans, jeans are in a fabric, um, usually in a denim, and denim is twill. So denim is not the weave, the twill is the weave of the weave of the fabric. And the twill, um, you probably know what twill, even if you, before you were sewing, right? Yes, those, those fabrics with the diagonal line. Twill has a bad uh, habit to torque because of those diagonal lines, right? So if you don't cut denim or twill uh, perfectly on grain, and it's really hard to determine the grain, the leg of your pants will twist around your leg, and that's torque. So when fabric is cut, you buy it at the fabric store and you get home with it. This is kind of a really long thing. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm gonna get a little bit off track with the sewing, but we could be done with this and just finish this on Saturday too. <laughs> um, fabric isn't usually cut on grain. And so there's two main grain lines on fabric. One is the length grain and it's parallel to the selvage, and the selvage is those little finished edges on the sides of your fabric. Um, and then the cross grain is perpendicular to that, so it's going across the fabric, and the cross grain is where they cut your fabric off of the bolt or roll, that's that grain. Now, if they don't cut that perfectly on the cross grain, which most people, most fabric stores don't, you may end up getting like the square inches if we're, you really have to boil it down to that, that you paid for, but you're not getting a rectangle, a perfect rectangle. You're getting something that may have a slanted line here and a slanted line at the top. And so um, when you fold your fabric, if you were to fold your fabric lining up that cut line, like they gave it to you because they just cut straight through, um, but not line it up with the selvages parallel to each other, you're gonna get, you're gonna get torque. So um, when I fold fabric before I start cutting it, I line up the selvages. I have this whole little method and I let the torque lines, you can see these diagonal long lines of the fabric and I kind of line up the selvages, kind of move them back and forth so that those torque lines disappear along the fold. So that's, that's really what we're talking about here because it is one of the biggest things that will help your garment hang nicer and be cut on grain a lot faster and easier if you can fold your fabric properly. It also means you might lose a little fabric at either end if the fabric was cut really badly off grain. If it's cut really badly off grain, and so when your fabric is, um, when your fabric is folded, let's say these two are the selvages here, right? And really what your fabric looks like when it's on grain is it looks like, well see that's a torque line. See, I'm getting these torque lines right here, this diagonal line, that's torque. But let's say that there's no torque. This is nice and flat. And when your selvages are lined up, you have this big gap here and you have this big gap here. Then if it's really significant, like really far off, you have to cut all your pieces individually, potentially. You might not have enough fabric to get all your, especially pants or something like that. So um, that in a nutshell is torque, is when the fabric, when it's folded, is doing this. This is torque really aggravating. It's 
It's very common in knits. Knits are very, very squirrely. So you probably ditched the stream and said this person doesn't listen to chat or pay attention to people and left. And I explained this to you when you're not here and I apologize for <laughs> missing your, your question, but that is a, the quickest definition of torque I can give you. And, and one of many definitions of torque. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, it's interesting because quilters um, are the, were the first to notice when fabric shops stopped cutting on grain. Fabric uh, garment owner or garment sewers didn't notice quite as quickly, I don't think. So, um, let's do the inseam and the pedal. That only leaves the rise and the waistband for Saturday. What do you guys think? I'm just like, distraction junction. <laughs> There's something stuck in your head now. I wish I would have kind of lined this up a little differently. This is gonna go right there though. So that is looking really good. You know, like that hits there. There's my 5 8 inch seam. This is gonna wrap around just like that. And there's the notch to the pin right there. So it does work. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you, that worked blade. Yeah, I know Leah like that. Um, I'm wondering if that's a little too esoteric for a, let me make a little video for applying for a job here. Cause you know, I bet like, what they really want is, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that I do need to do something like that, Anna. What I really wanna go on and on about right now is that size chart that I posted in the guild because it's so maddening. Um, that's my, ne it's, it's like, I wanna do a let's be honest about size charts. But I feel like it's too easy to miss the, in, it, what I'm trying to explain, you know? All right, I'm gonna just pin these and wait for Saturday. Saturday, we also have the gift bags to sew, which is great. Kara, would you feel more comfortable like starting with a pattern that you didn't have to trace? That does, for me, that would be a definite stumbling block. You know, I'd be like, ugh, I have to trace the patterns, you know? <laughs> Just lining up this, maybe hoping to get this a little bit right, BJ, I know. It was complicated, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I think if I submitted that, they'd be like, okay, know it all. <laughs> Try hard, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> In other words, um, let me put it to you in harsher terms. It is not my responsibility to educate their audience on topics that are important to me. But if they're more like, oh, hey, can you show your trick about how you thread your needle? You know, like the way I like to do the two cut ends through the eye. Um, like that seems more of like a little, like a tip or a trick, or it's not even a trick. It's just the way, you know, you do things. Um, where well, you can do something if it works for you, so. Yes, Jan, that's it. That's exactly it. You know, the, I don't want to come up with their content. I want, if it's a, if it's a job, I want them to like a, not a job as in like an employment situation, but a, um, you know, here, we want you to do this job for us. This is what we want. Great. I will just do it. <laughs> 
It shouldn't be emotional. I shouldn't be emotionally invested in it. And if I'm coming up with the content, I am emotionally invested in it, big time. So, anyway. <laughs> yeah, Anna, I know. I know, like, let's just look at how many videos I have on my channel. Let's just look, let's just look. I, I can't, I, it's actually kind of hard for me to tell. I think I have to be, wait, maybe if I go here, this is where I need to go. Do I? Uh, well, it doesn't really show how many videos are videos. It doesn't show here. Where is it? It's so somewhere. Maybe in Creator Studio. Let me see. Like I saw the other day and I was like, oh, we went way past that 500 mark, you know? Maybe on my dashboard. <laughs> I, don't, I really don't even know. But I did get a million views recently, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, I just don't see content. I feel like it shows if I'm a user looking at my channel, not me looking at my channel. So anyway, because one of you told me, I was like, oh, cool. Oh, a little gift bag tutorial. Well, that's true. Yeah, just like sew something really cute or so quick. <laughs> Cute's great too. <laughs> Yeah, the open-ended part of it, you know, you know what? It's true, Anna, because you know what would have been better? They should, they could have said, we have um, two audition formats, audition, you know, we want you to either show how you wind a bobbin, you know, like maybe they, it doesn't matter, like they don't, if they don't care about the content, right? They just want to see how you present the material, the exact same material amongst all the people. So if they had said, oh, show us how to wind a bobbin or show us how to thread a needle. Just something like, just to, just, it doesn't matter what you're doing, just so you're doing. It's like, like in 4-H, they have presentation day and they don't care if you're teaching how to um, make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. They just want you to present something and so it doesn't matter what you're making as long as you're doing all these other things. So anyway, yeah, a little gift bag. I'd probably have to come up with a pattern though because I'm not gonna use Hearts Fabrics pattern, you know? Because um, I've just been using their pattern lately because it's there. It, I could probably, I didn't yesterday though, did I? I kind of did, I don't know. All right, I gotta go. <laughs> I am all over the place with this. But I do, I kind of want to do it today. So I'll let you know what I, I do and I'll show it to you. Maybe I will keep it something like, this is how I put pins on a pin cushion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, um, I don't know. I'm overthinking it. I told you guys I'm overthinking it. So. No, that's the thing here. They want me to film it with their branding. They want me to film it unbranded with my stuff. So I have to do it. So thanks you guys, I appreciate it. I probably won't even get the gig. <laughs> so yeah, that's another thing. This, the, the, they, they approached people in November and I was like, oh my gosh, this is a really bad time of year. Yeah, see, I knew I was getting close to 600, 589 videos. There are channels with 100,000 subscribers that don't have that many videos on their channel. Yeah, you know what? That's what I was thinking, like this, Anna. Like, what if I did this? Like a little um, coaster. This is a little quilted coaster that I did. Because then I could show my binding technique. This is what I'll do. I have shown this so many times. This is what I'll do. I potentially could get some paid video work, Walter. <laughs> it's not pretty. <laughs> it's not pretty. Yeah, exactly. Hold on while I overthink this, yeah. 
I've literally been thinking about this particular video since November. <laughs> when they said that, I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, good. I'm really glad that you guys are um, understand where I'm coming from on this, though. So, yeah, I think that I think that's it, Anna. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. That is a very much a I also this is the other thing is like partly I don't think this person would ever do this. Um, partly, I do not want to give a video that is so good. They just use it. Like, oh, that's part of your application process and we own it now. I don't think they would do that, but I know people who would. So that's something I'm like, fine, you're going to steal that. I've shown that so many times. So yeah, yeah, exactly, Anna. That's the t-shirt we need, Kira. It's time to just do something and call it done. That's the t-shirt we need, Kira. Yeah, I'm going to bind a square. I'm going to bind a square. <laughs> all right you guys i'll see you saturday where i'm not overthinking so much and um we will do our pedals and the waistband we got literally pockets and, a, and side seams done this is the least productive i've ever been in a live stream yeah <laughs> that's awesome kira i love it it sounds very cutthroat i doubt it is I, um, I know the Vlogmas videos really added, that added like 30 videos <laughs> to my thing, like 20 videos. So yeah, um, I doubt it's cutthroat. I bet they haven't even had a whole lot of people apply. I don't know though. They reached out to me recently again. They're like, hey, have you thought about it? And I was like, I have definitely thought about it. I have overthought about it. <laughs> Cool, thanks you guys. Maybe I'll post it in the guild. <laughs> All right, well, thanks for the, the encouragement. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys Saturday, um, where hopefully this will be more entertaining. So, <laughs> bye you guys. <laughs>